When it comes to drawing butterflies to the garden, it's hard to beat the Joe pie weeds, the Eutrochium species. These large, moisture-loving plants are known for producing eye-catching displays of pink to purple flowers in the midsummer to early fall. The blooms attract a wide range of pollinators, including large native bees such as bumblebees and especially butterflies of all sizes, including tiger swallowtails and monarchs. I'm Anthony with Backyard Ecology, and today I'm going to cover four species of Joe pie weed that are commonly available and excellent additions to any butterfly garden. In between the species descriptions, I'm also going to add in some fun facts and propagation tips for Joe pie weed, so be sure to watch for those. I'll start off with the largest of the Joe pie weeds, hollow Joe pie weed, Eutrochium fistulosum, which is known for producing large, rounded clusters of pink to purple flowers that form on the tops of five to seven foot tall plants. Believe it or not, hollow Joe pie weed can attain a height of up to 12 feet under optimum conditions. The blooms occur from July to September. This is a plant of moist to wet soils and can be found growing in full sun to partial shade, but it does best in full sun. Hollow Joe pie weed has a widespread native range in eastern North America. It will spread by rhizomes to form a clump or small colony. Characteristics that help distinguish hollow Joe pie from other Joe pie weeds are leaf whorls containing five or more leaves that can be up to nine inches long by three inches wide, a stem that has a whitish waxy surface, and as the name suggests, a hollow stem. If you are finding the information in this guide useful, please be sure to pollinate that like button. Joe pie weeds are an excellent native alternative to the non-native invasive butterfly bush, the Bedudlia species. Joe pie attracts as many, if not more butterflies than butterfly bush does and has the added bonus of being a host plant to several species of Lepidoptera, including the completely cool ruby tiger moth. Sweet Joe pie weed, Eutrochium purpureum, has rounded clusters of light pink to light purple flowers that form on the tops of three to six foot stems. Blooming occurs from July through September. Like all Joe pie weeds, sweet Joe pie weed will grow in moist soils, but can withstand much drier soils and can be found growing in shadier conditions as well, although it will do well in full sun. It can be found throughout eastern North America. This is also a rhizomatous species and will form a clump or small colony. Things to look for when identifying sweet Joe pie weed are leaf whorls that contain three to four leaves that are up to six inches long by three and a half inches wide, and a green stem that is purple where the leaves attach to it. So why is Joe pie weed called Joe pie weed? The most often told legend is that in the 1600s, a Native American herbalist saved a colony of English settlers from a typhoid epidemic using a tea made from a local herb. The colonists called this herbalist Joe Pye, and then they ascribed his name to the miracle herb that saved them. However, there is zero evidence to back any of that up. Research presented in 2017 showed that there was a Mohican sachem known by the name of Joseph Shalquithquit who lived in the Stockbridge, Massachusetts community during the late 1700s and early 1800s, was a well-respected member of the community, sat on the local government, and was known by the white settlers as Joe Pye. As a member of the First Nations, he would have had knowledge of the medicinal properties of the local plants. It's not known whether he told the settlers that Joe Pye weed had fever reducing properties or if they just saw him collecting it and then ascribed the name that they knew him by to the plant. Either way, it's a cool story and it has a lot more evidence supporting it than anything else out there. Spotted Joe pie weed, Eutrochium maculatum produces flat topped clusters of pink to purple flowers atop three to six foot tall stems. Blooming occurs a little later than other Joe pie weeds and lasts from August through October. It grows best in moist to wet soils that receive full sun to partial shade. Spotted Joe pie weed is widespread in the eastern U.S. except for the deep south. It will spread slowly to form a clump or small colony. Characteristics of spotted Joe pie weed are leaf whorls that contain four to five leaves, which are up to seven inches long by two and a half inches wide, and a purple to purple spotted stem that is fuzzy. The flat top flower clusters are also unique to this species. Since the Joe pie weeds spread by rhizomes, they are easily propagated by root division. 
This should be done in a garden setting every three to four years or whenever the center of a clump is no longer producing viable stems. Dividing the plants will give you more Joe Pye weed to plant elsewhere in your gardens and it also will improve the overall health of the plants. Coastal Joe Pye weed, Eutrochium dubium, is the smallest of the group and is known for producing a beautiful display of pink to purple flowers at the ends of three to five foot stems. The bloom period lasts from July through October. It grows best in moist to wet sandy soils and can be found growing in full sun to the partial shade of pine lands. The native range is restricted to the Atlantic coast states. Like other Joe Pye weeds, it will spread to form a clump or small colony. Coastal Joe Pye weed can be identified by leaf whorls that contain three to four leaves, which can be up to six inches long. The leaves are also strongly veined and have a rough, bumpy appearance and feel. The stem is usually purple spotted. It looks a lot like spotted Joe Pye weed and is often misidentified and vice versa, but it has a little bit more rounded flower clusters than spotted Joe Pye weed does. While there are several cultivars of Joe Pye weeds available, by far the most well-known and most commonly found is the Little Joe cultivar of coastal Joe Pye weed. This cultivar is slightly smaller at three to four feet tall, has stiffer, more upright stems, and is more drought resistant. Because Joe Pye cultivars are produced from cuttings, all plants are clones, leading to more uniform shape, height, flower color, bloom time, and bloom duration. If you have a more formal garden setting, a Joe Pye weed cultivar might be the answer to that. In most butterfly gardens, the straight species is gonna be the correct choice. If you would like to learn more about native plants for the butterfly garden, check out this video, subscribe to Backyard Ecology, and get out and explore nature in your backyard.